Sarah smiled nervously as she exited the ship, briefcase in hand, stepping onto the main port concourse level of Dana's outpost in the Itaru Cluster. The dwarf planetoid of Dana's was many things. Capital World, Banking Hub, Trading Station, but for Sarah and the crew of the FSS Archibald Way, it was the closest thing there was to home after a long journey from Kenara and the Tyson Sector Compact. And a fine home Dennis outpost was. Upon exiting the ship, Sarah and her crewmates were immediately accosted by a cacophony of catcalls from the eagle proprietors of the innumerable market stalls that lined the concourse. Street food, souvenirs, weapons, tools, household items, ship supplies, Everything one could think of was available on the concourse and, apparently, at a heavy discount. The stalls were far from the more formal and official retailers of the Danis Bazaar, though many had a level of refinement and presentation that reflected their extended history bordering on permanency. Local administrators generally turned a blind eye to this type of opportunistic peddling, viewing the benefits of extracting coin from returning starship crews back into the local economy as justification for the lack of regulation enforcement. It was a sign of the pragmatic approach adopted by the Commonwealth government to law enforcement. She glanced at the stalls as she walked and saw a purveyor of various types of mild narcotics, natural and artificial recreational drugs from innumerable worlds, many of which were illegal in the major and independent powers. Sarah, like most of his free flagger brethren, relished the freedom she had in Fall's Edge. Personal choice, including the right to make your own mistakes, was a privilege far too often quashed by the rampant authoritarianism of the Diaspora under the guise of necessity. There was, of course, the ever-present specter of organized crime. Several major criminal houses, some with dealings across worlds of the western half of the Diaspora, had a significant presence in Fall's Edge. Rather than simply tolerating this criminal presence, Commonwealth authorities had encouraged these syndicates to incorporate, providing the houses with a degree of legitimacy. In return, the Commonwealth collected copious taxes and made sure their local activities never strayed into areas that represented a threat to the Falls Edge economy or governance. The soft touch to regulation and law enforcement didn't mean the many freedom-loving residents and organizations of Falls Edge weren't constantly pushing the boundaries of legality. Smuggling of even the limited number of prohibited items and substances was particularly common, and authorities were always on the watch for those fragrantly flouting the limited restrictions the Commonwealth imposed. As the crew of the Archibald's Way left the stall line for concourse, Sarah clocked a heavily armed squad of Commonwealth enforcers, an elite group of paramilitary police. Sarah pretended to ignore them, to go about her business as a freshly returning free flagger captain and a crew seeking some R&R. &R. But instinctually, she grasped at the metal briefcase, coughed to her wrist, tied her in their presence. Maybe that tiny response was enough to raise the suspicion of the enforcers, for as Sarah and her crew passed, the squad turned and slowly began to follow them. Sarah led her outwardly jovial and relaxed crew to the red light district of the port's commercial precinct and past one of the innumerable free clinics dotted throughout the outpost. It wasn't lost on Sarah and most of the residents of the Commonwealth that the free healthcare and subsidized housings they enjoyed were in part paid for from the taxes of incorporated criminal syndicates. And it was a contact at one of these syndicates, referred to as the Trust, with whom the captain of the Archibald's Way was to deliver her package. The red light district was home to a vibrant mix of upmarket bordellos, expensive restaurants and high-end casinos mixed organically with less refined brothels, dive bars, and gambling houses. It was also a common haunt for starship crews, renting cheap rooms in the many taverns and boarding houses of the area, affording them convenient access to delightfully sinful pleasures of the district. The district streets were bustling with activity as Sarah continued forward, so sensing an opportunity, she picked up the pace of her walk, expertly weaving among the crowds in an attempt to lose her tail. She gave a small gesture with her hand and her crew immediately dissipated into the crowd in various directions in an effort to sow further confusion. And it worked. Sarah ducked into a small alley between a lively bordello and a budget gambling house and walked briskly toward a hole in the wall speakeasy called the Blind Tiger. She was sure she wasn't being followed as she entered the dimly lit jazz bar cell room with relaxed melodic tunes being played by the house band. Feeling more secure, 
Sarah immediately headed to the long bar lined with bottles and carafe of all manner of alcoholic and mildly hallucinogenic beverages. There she ordered a Martinelli spritz, an effervescent drink named for the royal house of Somayaji and the Tyson Sector Compact. Strong, fruity, and refreshing, she took a quick sip to relax her nerves. Yet, as she went to pay with her credit desk, the barkeep waved away her offer, pointing instead to a well-dressed, bespectacled, dark-haired man sitting at a small table behind her. It was the trust agent. Turning to see the man, Sarah smiled and walked over to him, taking the empty seat opposite him before Sarah typically uncuffing herself from the briefcase and sliding it towards him on the ground beside the table. Immediately reaching down to collect the briefcase, the agent unlocked it with a key around his neck and opened the case slightly ajar, enough to examine its contents. There inside were neatly arranged packets of vibrant orange, brown, and red powder called Sandbloom, a powerful hallucinogen and mind-altering narcotic harvested from the orange and yellow sands of Kinara and on the Commonwealth's prohibited substances list. The man closed the briefcase and smiled at Sarah before raising his glass to her. As he did, Sarah noted the ship's local coalition bank account balance flash up on her vision overlaid HUD. 50,000 credits added to the ship's account. She raised her glass back to him before taking another sip, a long one this time. Pleasure doing business with you. 